Okay, so question number 13 says we have a variable force that is going to act on a two kilogram mass. And uh, reading through this, it's, you know, a constant force and then it changes, then a constant. And so um, I'm, I'm not going to read through all of that. But basically, the one thing it asks us to do is to draw a graph of the force versus distance. And then we'll find how much work is done by this force. And then what's the final speed of the mass. So let's go ahead and work on the force versus distance graph, right? So here's going to be my force. And again, that's going to be measured in newtons. And this is going to be my distance, um, or S, and that's going to be measured in meters. Okay, so if I look at this, you know, we have as small of a force of um, 2 or 4, and we get as big as 8. So I'm just going to go, um, you know, 1, 2, <clears throat> 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So two, four, six, eight. So what's it look like? All right. And then um, we'll kind of do that same idea for our distances. It doesn't seem like it goes very far each time. Where every two blocks I'll have equal to uh, one meter. So two, four, six, eight. And we'll... We'll see how things change. Okay. So our first part of the motion. Uh, for the first two meters, the force is at a constant of four. All okay. right. So for our first two meters, we have a force of four. And so that'll be that. For in the, um, in the next two meters, it is constant at eight. So then we're going to jump up to 8, and we'll have 1, 2. In the next 2 meters, it drops from 8 to 2 uniformly. So once we get to 6 meters, it's going to be this. And so it's going to be a nice uniformly. That would be a linear drop, right? <clears throat> And then it increases uniformly from two to six uh, in the next two meters. So two to six in the next two meters. So that's about right there. And it then remains constant at six for the next four meters. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of back and forth with this one. So, so that's 10. 11 and 12. So next four meters are at eight and then it remains at six. So that's my graph. All right, second, find the work done by this force. All right, well, if we think about this in terms of a force versus distance graph, uh, remember that work equals force times distance, right? Um, and so if we look at a graph that looks like this, you know, this is obviously not a con... Well, let's actually... Let's look at the blue graph first. If we look at this, force times distance, that's going to be the area there, right? So uh, if, if I knew my force, that's my area. If I had... This, I don't have a constant force, but I can still find this area by, you know, one half base times height. And so we're going to apply that same logic here. Uh, I'm going to draw some areas here. And hopefully we'll be able to understand what that is. All right, so we have work done there. That's our red area. Then we're going to have our blue area. And then this one of our green area. And with our green area, we're going to split that into two parts. Um, oh, you know what? I don't like the, the green there. Let's, I wanted green there, so let's do this. So there's our splitter. <clears throat> and then we have our purple area. And again, we can split that into, oh, Put that into there, and then we'll go back to red to finish it up. Or no, let's just do black. We got, an, we got one more color there. 
So I can find the area of each of these, uh, and that's how I would find the net work done. So work equals the area under the curve. So let's do that. So for this one, we have what, four times two. So my area is eight. With this one, I have eight times two. So I have an area of 16. For this one, I have, so let's do the triangle first. So we have one half times my base, which is two times my height, which is from two to eight uh, is six. So that's 12, so this is gonna be six, and then this is gonna be two times two, which is four, so that's a total of 10 for that one. For the green, for this, uh, we, we just calculated that's four. This is gonna be one half times two times my height, which my height here is two to six, so that's a four. So that has a height of four, so my total area of the purple is eight. And then lastly, we have six times four, which is 24. So the entire work then is eight plus 16 plus 10 plus eight plus 24. What's that? 24, 48, 58, and 58 plus six is going to give me 66 Newton meters. All right. Looking at the last part then, it says, what is the final speed of the mass? And again, we're going to have something that initially starts at rest, and my mass is two kilograms. So uh, it makes the setup pretty straightforward. Uh, C, so find final velocity. And so what do we know? We know our initial velocity is zero. We know our final velocity is what we're looking for. Our mass is two. And we know that the work is 66. And so remember that the idea for work is that work causes a change in kinetic energy, right? Which is a change in kinetic energy is kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. And my initial kinetic energy is going to be zero. And that's because my initial velocity is zero. Remember, kinetic energy is one half mv squared, right? And so if my velocity is zero, then everything else is zero. So I can then rewrite this as the work equals the kinetic energy final. Work then is equal to one half mv squared. We're going to multiply each side by two to get v by itself. We're also going to divide each side by m. So my half two cancels out, my m's cancel out, and I'm left with v squared equals two times the work divided by my mass, and then we're gonna square root that. So velocity becomes the square root of two work divided by my mass, which is two times 66 divided by two, which is nice because boop, twos go away. And, sorry for the boop, I don't know why. We're left with the square root of 66, which your math teacher would probably love for you to leave it like that. But, you know, we like to actually understand what that is. And 66 square rooted is 8.12 meters per second. So that's how I'd work through that. Um, so I really like this question, right? And, and it gives us the opportunity to see, you know, when we have graphs, how can we work through this problem to understand how much work is done? And then again, using the idea that work and energy are the same. So if I do so much work, I gain so much energy, okay? So let's make sure we understand conceptually, right? Why does that make sense? Well, initially we have some car at rest, right? So there are two forces acting on it, gravity and normal, and those are gonna cancel out. But then we have this other force, we'll just call this F, right? And that's going to push or pull it in this direction. And that force changes, right? But if it's changing or if it's applying a force, right? So this is really my net force now, which if there's a net force, that means there, goes, there is going to be an acceleration in the same direction. And so if I'm accelerating, right? 
I'm going to be speeding up. The problem is I don't have a constant acceleration here because my force changes. So acceleration is not constant. And so I cannot use any of those constant acceleration equations, right? So like um, velocity equals initial plus acceleration times time. I can't use that because I don't have a constant acceleration. I can't use this because I don't have a constant acceleration. I can't use any of those kinematic equations, but if I can understand that however much work is done equals my change in kinetic energy, then if I know my final kinetic energy, I can figure out how fast I'm going, right? My final kinetic energy is 66, and then using this equation here, we're just manipulating to solve for how fast I'm going, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. And we'll continue working through some more questions.